A group of Northwestern researchers have recently found a strong correlation between vitamin D deficiency and COVID-19 mortality rates. According to this study, patients from countries with a high number of COVID-19 deaths had lower levels of vitamin D compared to those from countries that were not affected as severely. What does all this mean? Here to discuss, Dr. John Campbell. He's an academic and nurse lecturer for 40 years, also founder of Campbell Teaching. Doctor, I only have about four minutes with you, but I want to get as much information as I can. We know the sun produces vitamin D for you. We know we have supplements out there to get vitamin D in your system. Which one is better? Are they the same? Is it better to get the sun? Is it better to get the supplements? Your advice. Let me just start off with a simple fact. 42% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. In Hispanics, that rises to 70%. And in African Americans, that rises to 82%. So there's basically an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency in the United States. And this is so important because it's a vital immunological molecule. The immune system can't work properly without vitamin D. It's what we call a modulator. So if someone's deficient in vitamin D, not only will the immune system not work properly, it can work too much in the wrong way. And that's what can cause these severe reactions in COVID-19 called the cytokine storm, which causes acute respiratory distress syndrome and death. And it's been estimated by this United Nations studies, looking at correlations around the world, that if everyone in the world had enough vitamin D, this could potentially reduce the case fatality rate by 50%. So I think this is simply an immense factor. We've known for years that vitamin D is absolutely vital for immunity. And there's more recent studies that show it's vital for immunity against respiratory viruses. Now, while we have no randomized, double-blind clinical controlled trials on vitamin D and COVID-19, this observational data is really starting to build up. And in my view now is really pretty convincing and overwhelming. And to answer your question on vitamin D, if you're in the sunshine, you get vitamin D. Now, you don't want to get burnt in the sun. So if it takes about two hours, say, to get sunburnt, then you'll make a lot of vitamin D in one hour. So we want to get halfway to being sunburnt to make the optimal amount of vitamin D. And if you're exposed to the sun for half the time it takes you to get sunburnt, with a good overall body exposure, your shorts and your top off, you'll make about 20,000 units of vitamin D. So that is quite a lot. And it's very important because the people that make vitamin D most slowly are the elderly. And of course, they're often in, <laughs> indoors a lot of the time as well. And the darker the colored skin, it's that simple, the more slowly the vitamin D is produced. So these people really tend to be short of vitamin D. And in my view, the American authorities should, should issue really firm guidelines to American doctors and prescribers to get really this vitamin here, D. Uh, just like any, anything, you know, I have to follow the, the, the time here. Um, but I want to make sure we get this right. Do we need to be taking vitamin D supplements based on the study, based on what you've seen? If someone is deficient in vitamin D, there is evidence that vitamin D supplementation can improve the quality of immunity. All right, so that's a good point. Then also as well, there are states though that you know, doctor, something like Ohio and these places where there's a lot of cloud cover, you're not gonna get a lot of vitamin D outside. That would be important for those people as well. Absolutely, you're not gonna make a lot of vitamin D in Chicago over winter. And that means the levels do drop. And we know from various studies around the world that as winter goes on, vitamin D levels drop. And when do we get most infections? We get most infections over winter. We have the influenza season every winter. Yeah. And it happens that that is the time when the vitamin D levels are lowest. Yeah. And it's known that vitamin D is important in immunity. This is something that's known. We don't know the specifics about COVID-19, but it would be simply amazing if vitamin D wasn't involved in COVID-19 immunity because it's involved in so other many types of immunity and specifically immunity to viruses. Let me ask you, uh, I have other things to talk to you about, but, but it brings me to another question. Um, Mexico, we just reported that the cases there keep going up by the day. They've seen their highest spike there. I'm just spitballing with you, doctor. You, you're the guy that knows it, but this is a pretty warm area with you know ample amounts of sunlight in this area. Why wouldn't we maybe see a difference there? It's an excellent question. Of course, 
there's so many factors to take into account. There's other things that can cause immunodeficiency as well as vitamin D. So, for example, if you're short of vitamin C, that will compromise the immune system and the body's ability to heal. If you're short of protein, that will compromise the ability's immune system and the ability to heal as well, because we need to make the antibodies. And if people are living in close environments, that's going to make the, the disease spread more. And as well as that, if people are living close to each other, they could have higher viral loads. And there's a lot of evidence now that suggests that if you're inoculated with a higher viral load, you can get more illness. And a lot of people in Mexico spend a lot of time indoors as well, especially if they're working in factories. So they may actually not get a yeah. lot of exposure to the sun. It's not the temperature. This virus is no respecter of temperature. It, 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 the, the infection proliferates and spreads in hotter countries as well as colder countries. But exposure to the sun, specifically to increase vitamin D levels, I do believe is going to be immunoprotective. That's huge. Um, and that is something that I, I, so. I want to, yeah, I want to make sure the viewers I think it's a game changer. Well. Absolutely. Yeah. A total game changer. Absolutely. I appreciate mm. you sharing that knowledge. Of course, it's always good to have you on. That was Dr. John Campbell, nurse lecturer and founder of Campbell Teaching. Doctor, thank you for joining us. We'll see you at this time tomorrow. You stay safe now.